the state is test driving a plan to tax you for every mile you drive. Raises questions about privacy and who pays more. Speaking of the tax man's hand in your wallet, we break down the Republican tax plan's impact on the Colorado housing market. Less of a problem for these guys, they're the outdoorsy type. A school in Denver welcomes dogs. The dogs help everybody out, they calm everybody down. A strange secret Santa involving strangers. And on this first night of Hanukkah, confessions of a Jewish mother. Next. There's a situation worth watching in downtown Denver right now. A suspicious package has been found on a light rail train. For the last 90 minutes or so, police have surrounded that train. They have shut down a portion of downtown Stout Street between 15th and 17th. RTD has stopped light rail traffic between the 16th and the 18th Street stations while this suspicious device gets checked out. There is train traffic that's now running south out of the convention center. Just to give you an idea of what we are and are not going to do with this situation throughout the program, we will be bringing you pertinent new information and pictures as they become available to us, but we are not going to go wall to wall until we have a better idea whether this is a serious situation or just something that needs to get checked out and cleared. Colorado is a stingy state. You know, since voters took power over all tax increases in 1992, we've only approved two of them. Cigarettes and marijuana, sin taxes, and driving is not seen by many as a sin. So despite CDOT's outgoing leader pleading to increase our 22 cent a gallon gas tax, it has not budged since 1991. Now, smart people know the sneaky way to slip a tax by Coloradans is to call it a fee. So that's what CDOT calls its pilot program that would have you paying by the mile. Marshall Zellinger took part in the test. Earlier this year, CDOT had me put one of these green devices into my car's computer slot to track my mileage. The test, what if the state got rid of the 22 cent per gallon gas tax and replaced it with a 1.2 cent per mile fee? Based on my driving habits during the test in my Honda Civic, I would pay about a cup of coffee more each month. Long story short, fuel efficient drivers would pay more than they're used to, jalopies would pay less. CDOT's final report says the test was not to determine how much it would bring in, but if it was even technically feasible. What if somebody registers a car in another state and drives into this state, right? Or how do we manage overhead costs? These are also questions we had that CDOT doesn't quite have the answer for yet. Security is another concern. CDOT's own final report on this pilot project stated, one of the biggest challenges will be convincing the public that any data collected on road usage will be protected and that drivers are not being actively monitored when they travel. We built a very solid firewall between the private sector and CDOT. The only thing that could flow through that fortified wall was a VIN number and a mileage measurement associated with it. We never ask ourselves if in the security field, we ask ourselves when. Security expert and Metro State Professor Steve Beatty also wants to know about privacy and the data CDOT collects. There have been very few places that have not been breached. Even some of the most sensitive and secure places in the world have been breached. So what about the data collected by the company operating the system for CDOT? Some of the devices plugged into the cars can be enabled with GPS. We have to rest assured knowing that our private sector counterparts are equally diligent in their efforts to protect the user's information. CDOT's own report says that after 10 years from now, they really don't have the money to upkeep the system, so they got to figure out all these answers to the questions within the next 10 years. Uh, Kyle, you could take a picture of your odometer and turn it in. That's how the test was done. Mm -hmm. I put a device in that didn't have GPS. It could have GPS, but before people freak out, if it's tracking your location, go to your location services on your phone, and if it's on, <laughs> you've already given that up. It's tracking you there. All right, about time you and your fancy car start paying your fair share, Marshall. Thank you, sir. The Republican tax plan being sorted out in Congress right now has the potential to have a serious impact if you are buying or selling a house. Brandon Ritterman and our Verify team take a closer look. We got started on this after a question from a viewer named Galen who was talking to a real estate agent friend telling me that there are changes in the current tax bill that impact capital gains that could basically kill the home buying and selling market. That prediction aside, we did check it out and verified the change he talks about is in both versions of the tax bill and it would hit some people hard. Frustration, Anger. Um, I, uh, panic. Rebecca and Sam Sunshine DeWitt are freaking out about this with good reason. They want to have a baby soon, and they bought this two-bedroom row house in Denver as a starter home. This is what we staked our future on, was, was being able to sell this after two years, move into a larger home um, to raise our family. 
that was the whole point of, of buying this house in the first place. The tax bill could mess up that plan. Let's say today you sell your house for $400,000. You originally paid three hundred. dollars You get to keep all $100,000 of the profit tax-free, as long as you used it as your primary residence for two years of the last five before you sell it. But the tax bill in Congress would change the rules. You'd have to live in your house for five years of the last eight to keep all the money. Sell before that, and you're on the hook for capital gains, which would cost you $15,000 in taxes in this example. This change would take effect on any sale starting next year, even if, like Rebecca and Sam, you already bought your house and were planning on selling it sooner. We knew we had to stay for two years. Staying here an additional three years isn't an option for us. This house has stairs that aren't safe for kids, they say, and doesn't have enough room. So they'd have to decide, try to make this place work with a kid or lose a bunch of money they plan to use toward a new house. You, you have less purchasing power. It's a problem. Kyle Malnati is a broker representing the Colorado Association of Realtors. Denver already has a shortage of houses for sale, he says, and this change would make it even tighter as people wait longer to sell. And so I just see a slowdown in people wanting to move, and that creates issue. The tax bill isn't a done deal yet, so if you're planning to sell in the next year or so, you'll want to ask an agent or tax professional about any changes to the law before you put it on the market. That way you won't be surprised by a big tax bill the next April. Here to verify, I'm Brandon Ritterman. We just don't want you surprised, that's all. So the House and the Senate are working on their compromise right now, trying to do it in a hurry. They want to get it done before the end of next week. It was another beautiful day in Denver, which meant that you could golf in December. It was the last round of golf for people playing the old Fitzsimmons course in Aurora. No place will ever compare to Fitzsimmons. I've hit thousands of balls here. And I just love to hit a ball well. We play here about a dozen times a year. This is the last one I'm going to remember here. Oh, we've been playing here over 20 years. It's got to be 86, 87. And I'm probably one of the young guys. Some of the best people you're ever going to meet on a golf course are at Fitzsimmons. My husband and I had our first date here. I would beat him sometimes. <laughs> Just playing here reminds me of my dad. And actually, the last round of golf before he passed away, my dad and I played here together. This was our home course, and we're going to miss it. I don't like it. I didn't believe it would ever happen. It's sad. It's sad. I'm going to miss it tremendously. Fitzsimmons Golf Course was supposed to close on Friday, but you now have two extra days if you want to try to slip around, and course's last day is Sunday. No disrespect to Governor Hickenlooper, but if you say his name on live television enough times, it is bound to come out garbled at least once. Like one of several versions that appeared on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire today. Hickenlooper, Lupin Hicker, Hoopin Licker, Lickin Hooper. The contestant did get the answer correct. Had to use a lifeline, though. Polled the audience. I recall the first time that I mashed up the governor's name coming out of my mouth. My audience had something to say about it as well. I'm meteorologist Kathy Saban. Some changes to the forecast. Yep, it's calm and quiet outside right now after a day with a record tying high of 69 degrees. And now we've got snow in the forecast tomorrow. We've had 63 degrees without measurable snowfall at DIA, the fourth longest streak of that kind. But that is all about to change. Rain and snow showers this time tomorrow night that could carry over into the Thursday morning drive. And there's a stronger storm behind that one that won't bring another round of snow to us over the weekend. Mountains have the best shot at seeing accumulating snow, but some moisture on the way, along with a temperature drop to seasonal highs in the 40s, something we haven't seen in quite some time. No issues tonight or tomorrow. Things change in 24 hours. Tonight in the city, fair skies, calm, 32 degrees. Tomorrow, temperatures in the 50s with increasing clouds and wind late in the day. Evening rain and snow showers will linger into the Thursday morning drive, and then we clear out. Friday is sunny and very warm, and then we have a chance for snow and cold both Saturday and Sunday, but with clear skies tonight, Night. Check out the Geminid meteor showers. Look in the northeast sky away from city lights. Take a look. The most Colorado thing we saw today needs your caption. Hashtag hey next so I see it during the break. Do you know what your school and mine were missing when we were growing up? 
dogs. When they know like when you're crying or you're mad, they'll come to you. They're giving you to try it in elementary school. And as we mark the first night of Hanukkah, let's talk about Happy Holidays versus Merry Christmas. It's the Confession of a Jewish Mother, next. We saw today is a group of deer near Fort Collins that look like, in the words of our assignment editor, Sean Griswold, like they're about to drop the hottest folk album of the year. They're checking out a convenience store at Horsetooth Inn in an RV park. Lori Jones sent us the photo. She said we could all use a bit of laughter and joy. Agreed. Randy Dodd wins our caption contest with, is this going to be big enough, dear? Dogs make everything better. That is a fact. Perhaps a fact made up by a person who likes dogs. But still, a school in Denver is looking to back it up with evidence. Our Aunt Herps spent her day at Bruce Randolph playing with dogs. Throw in the trash. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And their kit can't. But what if you send them to school? I can teach you a trick. These dogs aren't at Denver's Bruce Randolph School for show and tell. And the dogs help us out with our like our anger. They're canine counselors. Anything for food. Won't you? Amanda Ingram is a Denver health therapist who works with the kids here. Good girl. She also trains guide dogs for the blind. And she was my seventh dog, and so it was just routine for me to train her and give her back. Lucky number seven. Amanda got to keep her. And she hates walking, so I think she was like, well, this isn't really what I'm made for. I'd rather cuddle with people. That's how Paletta the Black Lab became the school's therapy dog three years ago. I am the principal here, and I've been here for 13 years. I asked the principal if we can, if I can bring her to the school. So I have a pretty big fear of dogs. And he's like, no one else is doing this, but let's give it a chance. And I like the therapy part. I didn't, I wasn't sure about the dog part. In the first year, 65% of the kids I worked with got sober. Incidents and events have dramatically dropped. Um, my clients were showing up for every single therapy session. It worked so well. Teachers are getting their own dogs trained as therapy dogs. Oh, we have a couple dogs too. We have She's Penny. She's a golden retriever. Her name's Kit. And this is chaos. So this is Spike. Six dogs in all are spending time with kids like Javon. She likes me the most. It's not only therapy for the kids. This summer, um, we had an addition to the family. Actually, he now has his very own dog. <laughs> Here is a picture of Cersei. The therapy has definitely worked on me. I didn't think it was for me. Sweet! I can't hear you. And while the dogs are learning new tricks, the kids are learning much more. Every school should have a, a therapy dog. For next, this is Ann Herbst. The dogs of Bruce Randolph have to be certified. They have to pass a test, as do their owners. You can't just roll up at school and turn your dog loose in a classroom. Happy Hanukkah to all who are celebrating tonight. Let's have some straight talk about the season. This time of year, I feel very left out. A salute to those who spend the holidays raising packages to our doors. And a woman in Fort Collins accidentally received a stranger's Christmas list. We love what she did next. The all clear has been given by Denver police in downtown Denver. They're checking out that suspicious package left on a light rail train. It's caused quite the commotion for the better part of two hours. The all clear has been given. Traffic will begin moving again. Trains will begin moving again. They said the package was not suspicious. This is a great reminder to light rail passengers that if you don't set your bag or package on the seat next to you and you allow someone else to sit there, you're also less likely to leave it behind when you get off the train. Happy Hanukkah to everyone who will be in celebrating tonight. Neighbors of ours who are pretty likely to be greeted with Merry Christmas a lot more than Happy Hanukkah. Views on that, of course, will differ, but we invite you to consider this one, the confession of a Jewish mother. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah. Get a light the menorah, the house is pretty. This time of year I feel very left out. I know people are very sensitive about not being able to say Merry Christmas. Some say Happy Holidays, but nobody takes into account that there are other holidays that people celebrate. Sometimes I'll tell them that I don't celebrate Christmas, I celebrate Hanukkah, and they'll say, oh, sorry, Happy Hanukkah. Sometimes I just go with it and say Merry Christmas back. It's not so much with strangers that say Merry Christmas to me, it's the people that have known me for years that say Merry Christmas to me when they know I don't celebrate Christmas. And I think it's because a lot of people think that Jewish people celebrate both Christmas and Hanukkah, and they don't understand that they're two separate religious holidays. 
and that they're not celebrated by everybody. I like looking at the Christmas lights. They're pretty. They, they just make things really bright and cheery and fun. And I listen to Christmas uh, music and I watch Christmas movies. They show family and, and how family gets along and does holidays and, and there are no Hanukkah movies, so you can't watch Hanukkah movies. Are there really no Hanukkah movies? Come on, Hallmark, get on it here. Happy Hanukkah to everybody lighting the first candle tonight. So if you have a confession for us, any topic, anything that you think Colorado needs to hear, but you don't necessarily want your face shown so that you'll catch grief at the office for it, just email us, next at 9news.com. You can start a conversation on social media, but get our attention with the hashtag HeyNext. We love a, a secret Santa story this time of year. This one, though, has a twist. So a woman named Debbie in Fort Collins accidentally gets sent a man's Amazon wish list for Christmas. Debbie does not know this guy, Mark. He even lives in St. Louis. But she decided, you know what, I'll buy him a little something off the list. It was a dog calendar. So Mark was so touched by this, he found Debbie on Facebook, and he sent her a custom canvas print of her property. She absolutely loves it. So two strangers accidentally connected are now intentionally linked. I've always been kind of a pay-it-forward type of person, and I've made it my goal in the last year to compliment as many people as I can. I opened up his list and looked at it, and... He had like an airplane on there and tickets to something, and so obviously I picked a calendar because <laughs> I could afford it. <laughs> we were—I wasn't expecting anything in return um, from this man. Um, I don't know; it just tickled me, and it was nice to know that there there are just people out there, just like me, that aren't all caught up in everything, and we can be nice to each other. Boy, doesn't that beat spending 60 seconds on the latest random crime around town? So Mark and Debbie have agreed that if he is ever out in Fort Collins or she's in St. Louis, they will get in touch and they will meet up for a beer. More proof they're good people. So let's show a little love to our package delivery folks again this year. You know, it never hurts to leave the thank you note out with a bottle of water or Gatorade or a snack bar. These people are running left, right, and center. And a special shout out tonight to a man who's been delivering for Glenwood Springs for three decades. Dale Hawkins is retiring next year after 35 years of delivering packages for UPS. All of Glenwood knows him and his son, Adam. Adam used to come along when he was in high school as his dad's extra holiday help. Adam's all grown up now, lives in Arkansas. Yesterday, he came all the way home to Colorado to surprise his dad to go out on the route together one last time. They were out till 930 last night, a Hawkins family tradition. We love that story so much. Hey. Do not send next photos of your pretend perfect holiday with your family. That's for Facebook. We want you to send us the real stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Holiday fails. And your feedback next. All right, we're doing it. We're bringing back your holiday fails. Facebook is for the fake perfection. Consider next to be the junction of Real Street and Honest Ave on this holiday season. So when your grand plan for something beautiful turns into something that's fantastically failed, you need to share the photo or the video with the rest of Colorado. We can do that. Email next at 9news.com or get our attention with the hashtag HeyNext. Uh, speaking of being real, we are kicking off a new segment, and we're going to do it for you tomorrow night. I don't think that we have time tonight. So time for your feedback now. So kudos to Marshall, TM writes. Kudos to Marshall for driving an economical Honda Civic. Kyle, I would be curious to know what kind of vehicle you drive. Well, TM, I ride a horse that was born here in Colorado. I feed it only locally grown organic grass, and I collect its waste to turn into electricity to power a neon sign reading, none of your business would I drive, nor is it my business what you drive. See you next time.